So my name is David Bowman. I'm a professor of geophysics in the Department of Geological Sciences at Cal State Fullerton. I'm also the uh, head of the department, which doesn't mean anything special. It just means I wasn't there when they had the election for who has to run the place. My specialty is looking at earthquake physics, which is the study of how and why earthquakes happen. Um, and that's a branch of seismology. Seismology is um, the study of how the earth vibrates fundamentally. So the earth vibrates from lots of different reasons. One reason is earthquakes. And, and in California, where the Cooper Center is, most people think about the earth vibrating from an earthquake happening on, along a fault. And the shaking that you feel from an earthquake is the earth vibrating. Well, seismologists can do lots of different things, um, and they work in lots of different places. Obviously, a university is one place where you find a lot of seismologists because they're doing research to try to understand some aspect of, of how the Earth works. You'll also find seismologists working in lots of other places. The oil industry is one place for looking for oil or, or other um, uh, energy kind of resource things. Uh, seismologists are also really important for understanding uh, hazards because earthquakes are a natural hazard and uh, we have to build our society to be resistant to earthquakes, and seismology is uh, an important part of that. They work in weird places you'd never expect, too. Uh, the Defense Department likes seismologists because uh, we can use seismology as a way to do detective work about what other countries around the world are doing as they design weapons and whatnot. The reason that today we can sense earthquakes all over the planet down to magnitude 3 is because during the Cold War, seismology was used to sense uh, Soviet nuclear tests. And we still use that to this day. Uh, the Worldwide Seismic Network is actually designed to sense uh, nuclear tests in other countries. So when North Korea sets a bomb off, for instance, how do we know about it? From seismology. So it's really, you'll find seismologists working in a lot of weird places you wouldn't expect because it's such an important way to probe our earth. Uh, but seismologists do lots of other things too. If you drive a car, you really, really care about seismology because seismology is what we do to prospect for oil. It's just like ultrasound at your doctor, except instead of a little ultrasound machine that goes wobble wobble wob around your stomach, uh, we set up big, gigantic things of explosives uh, that make vibrations in the Earth's crust and they go down and bounce off all the layers inside the Earth and then we feel those vibrations as they come onto the surface with seismometers and with that we make a picture of the Earth's subsurface just like an ultrasound fundamentally. We do it a little bit differently but it's the same basic idea. Big one, yes, the infamous big one. Here in California, everybody worries about the big one. It's in the movies, it's in popular press, they talk about it on the news and whatnot. The big one that people talk about in California is an earthquake that's hypothesized to occur on the San Andreas Fault. We know that really large earthquakes have happened on the San Andreas Fault in the past, and we know that they will happen again. So the big one, is a large earthquake that would happen on the southernmost portion of San Andreas, just east of Los Angeles, that would probably have an earthquake in about the magnitude 7.9 to 8, 8.1 range. That is technically known as a whopping big earthquake. Uh, that would be a huge earthquake um, that would have uh, some intense impacts on the city of Los Angeles. Uh, for, no, for, for some very simple reason that A, it's big, and so there'll be a lot of shaking, and the shaking will last a really long time. The 94 Northridge earthquake, the shaking lasted for 15 seconds. The big one, well, shaking will last for two, three, in some places as much as four minutes. Uh, that's why it's called the big one. So when, when, an, when any earthquake happens, um, the first thing you need to do is to know what to do during an earthquake. And anytime you have an earthquake happens, you should remember to uh, drop to the ground, uh, cover your head and hold on to something. Drop, cover and hold. Don't stand in a doorway, that's an old myth. Don't go crouch down by a wall. You want to find something like a sturdy table to duck underneath and hold on to the table. And you want to hold on to the table because the ground is shaking. 
And it would be really embarrassing way to die if you drop and cover your head the way you're supposed to, and then the table you're under sort of vibrates away. <laughs> that would be really embarrassing way to die. So uh, you drop a cover and you hold on to something so that as the shaking is going on, you're, you're, you're holding on to that shelter. That's what you should do during an earthquake. But really the most important thing for Californians to do is to be prepared before the earthquake. Be prepared before the earthquake by making an earthquake kit. Have water on hand. Have uh, food on hand in an emergency earthquake kit that after an earthquake you can go to to uh, sustain yourself. Because in, in a really big earthquake, it may be days or maybe even weeks uh, before help comes and, and utilities and infrastructure can be restored to us. So you've got to be self-sufficient. And that starts now. Every time the ground shakes a little bit and, and uh, everybody puts their head up and says, ooh, what was that, 4.1? Uh, take that as a wake-up call. Take that as a warning that you should get your earthquake kit and stock it and prepare your, your space and, and make a safe space for yourself. So really, the best thing to do in an earthquake is to be prepared in advance. If you'd like to be a future seismologist, uh, that's great. It's a great field to be into because there's so much that you can do. You can uh, do science research uh, kinds of things at a university. You can work in a career in industry. It's, it's absolutely critical to, to so many fields. And the things you need to do to be a seismologist are applicable outside of just seismology. Um, I know friends that I went to school with who were seismologists who now work for banks because the mathematics that you learn to do seismology is the exact same mathematics that banks use to forecast financial crashes and things like this. So it's a, it's a really neat field for that because it can be applied in lots of places and because the basic tools you need to learn are so applicable everywhere. So what are those tools? Math is the biggest, most important thing. Seismology is a very mathematical branch of the, the earth sciences. We use calculus and, and all of its wonderful forms. Um, so you need to work on your math and, and be good at that. Writing is very important. As important, if not even more important than being good at math, is being able to write and communicate. So uh, all those English lessons you do in school are really important because, it, and this is true of any science, the science doesn't exist until you communicate it to people. And so you've got to be a good communicator, um, both in writing and in, in oral communication with people. So those two, the reading and writing, are absolutely critical. After that, you go into any of the sort of science fields and you get the background that you need to do seismology, just like with any seismology. There's a lot of physics that involve. My background actually is in physics, not in geology. So, um, and that's a very common route for seismologists to be trained in physics and then move over into seismology as the earth sciences. But, but really, English and math are the key. So in the geology department at Cal State Fullerton, we cover all of the earth sciences from seismology like myself. We have people who study how mountains are built. We have people who study paleontology, the history of life on Earth. People who study volcanoes. Lots of different uh, interesting things that we, we have in the department. And I encourage anybody that's any at all interested in the Earth sciences or just how our wor world works to consider going to uh, the geology department website, geology.fullerton.edu, or to contact me or any of the other faculty that you'll see in the department. And all of our email addresses are on the web. Uh, we love to talk to people about what we do. You, you have to love what you do to, to be a scientist, and we all really do, and we're happy to talk about it. And a great way to do that is by watching what you see on the Cooper Channel. So uh, how can you help yourself? Subscribe to the Cooper Channel. Thanks for watching, and remember, drop cover and hold on. <laughs>